What's up everybody, it's Priyon Joni. Today I am going to show you how to get the best sound quality when you're using OBS to live stream. I'm gonna show you how to get the cleanest, loudest signal without clipping. But first, a word from our sponsor, Direct Music Service. DMS is an online database for working DJs and mix artists. It's the one-stop shop where you can get your music from for your gigs. It's a searchable, organized database with thousands of edits, remixes, and different versions of your favorite tracks from many different genres. What's also awesome about Direct Music Service, if you're always on the road just like me, they have this awesome mobile app so that you can search your favorite tunes, put them on a wish list, and they'll be ready for you on your Dropbox folder when you get home. And brand new for 2020, you can now save some money and get a discount using one of these two coupon codes. Use the code PJMONTHLY and get 30% off your first month off any monthly subscription. Use the coupon code PJYEARLY and get 10% off your entire first year of any yearly subscription. Go to directmusicservice.com today to sign up. So have you ever heard on the radio, whether it's DJ mixes or everyone's just talking, and the volume seems to be consistently even and fairly loud, like all the radio stations are just as loud as each other. And it doesn't matter what songs they're playing, whether they're old songs or new songs, everything seems to be dynamically even. The volume is very consistent from content to content. Now, whenever you hear professional live streams, it's very similar. There's that broadcast quality sound. However, whenever you see somebody live streaming from home or from their Twitch, their YouTube, their Facebook, a lot of times they don't really have that broadcast quality sound. When they're mixing a DJ set, sometimes you hear big changes in the volume going from song to song. Sometimes they can be playing way too quietly or other times they can be playing pretty loud that during transitions or just during louder songs, it starts to clip and you hear a little bit of that distortion. And sometimes you can hear a huge volume difference between the microphone and the music that's playing. So how do we get broadcast quality sound in our live stream? Well, a lot of you guys use OBS. And while OBS is a really great way to manage your live stream methods, OBS also happens to have some tools to help you process the audio that you're using for your live stream. That broadcast quality sound that you hear on the radio or even on television, that's achieved by the use of compressors and limiters. OBS actually has multiple audio tools, including a compressor and a limiter that you can use for your audio signal. So in a nutshell, basically a compressor and a limiter is just a type of volume control. It can allow quieter parts to get louder, and louder parts to get quieter, and it allows you to even out the differences in volume, the dynamics, so that you have a more balanced volume. So right now I'm using my Mackie Pro FX as my audio device where I plug everything into, and I'm using my MacBook Air as my camera and my live streaming computer. So let's show you now in OBS how I process my audio signal so I get a closer to broadcast quality sound so I can go as loud as I want it to go and still prevent it from clipping. So right now in OBS, I have my Mackie Pro FX as this audio device. It says mic auxiliary. And uh, let's just make sure that the Mackie Pro FX is selected by going to properties. Yep, Pro FX. Okay, so we can see that right now. Check one, two. So to access the audio processing effects, you go back to this settings tab and you go to filters. And as you can see here, I already have a compressor and a limiter. So just to show you how to add this over here, it's basically you use the plus sign and you can select a compressor and this is gonna be labeled compressor two because I already have a compressor. And then you can select a limiter. And that's how you pull out the compressor and the limiter in OBS. 
but I already have two with my own settings here. So we're just going to delete these. Yes, then minus. So why am I using a compressor before a limiter? Well, the thing is, is when you just use just a limiter, especially when you're using a, I don't want to call it cheap, but it's not a super high quality mastering limiter plugin that I'm normally used to. It's just basic limiter inside OBS. Adding a compressor behind it actually helps tame the dynamic level so that you retain a little bit of the transience of the signal. Sometimes when a limiter is too strong, it just kills some of the attack of the music. What we want to do here is we want to kind of retain it using the compressor before we feed it to the limiter. The purpose of the compressor is to kind of shape the dynamic changes. And then the limiter is just the spot where we're not going to allow any signal go past a certain point. It's just a very hard limiter. So my settings for my compressor are like this. My ratio is four to one, threshold is at minus five. The attack is at 102 milliseconds, release is at 94 milliseconds, and the output gain is at two decibels. So next for the limiter, I have the threshold at minus three decibels and then the release at 195 milliseconds. So if zero dB is where you're not supposed to pass, I like to actually hang out at minus three. There's a reason for this. Whenever you are trying to push a signal to hit zero, sometimes on social media, when the signal is in mono, like when you're hearing it on your phone, taking a signal that's peaking at zero dB and converting it from stereo to mono can sometimes cause the signal to go above zero and clip. And you're gonna hear it because it'll be distorted when you hear it in mono. I always choose negative three as my maximum point where my peaks are with my audio signal. This way, there's a three dB headroom in case everything gets summed to mono and it'll keep it from distorting. I don't follow the same rules in music. Usually in music, you're just right under the zero. But when it comes to video, I always make sure that I have 3 dB of headroom by keeping my peaks at 3 dB or below. So what exactly does this sound like? Well, let's actually broadcast this to a private video on YouTube. So right now what you're hearing and what you're seeing is actually recorded on YouTube. We're gonna split the screen so you can kind of see what OBS looks like versus the YouTube broadcast. Now, like I said, my compressor is set so that it'll kick in at minus five dB and my limiter is set that it'll kick in at minus three dB after the compressor. So watch the meter. I'm gonna go into the red, but it's not going to distort. Check one, two, check test one, two. Check one, two, check test one, two. Check one, two, check test one, two, check one, two. So my microphone is pretty even in the way it sounds. What happens is, is when I get too loud, it actually brings it down. So when I'm at different, just slightly different distances, the microphone volume is pretty consistent. That's the compressor and the limiter working. It's kind of like that radio voice. So what does it sound like with music? So let's play a drum loop right now. So in order for me to hit the limiter and the compressor, I have to really push the volume. So this is just conservative on it. Now let's crank it. So as it gets louder, it seems like the music is getting louder, but it doesn't clip when it gets quote unquote too loud. Like I said, what the compressor and limiter are doing is they're kind of strategically bringing down the music as it gets louder. And what that does is it actually pushes the quieter parts of the signal and pushes it up. 
So the way I use it is I try not to be too loud. I don't want to be always buried inside the threshold of the compressor and the limiter. I just want to be at a point where I'm just lightly kissing it. So it's more like the upper yellow and where I'm just kind of making the reds just slowly tap like I am now with my voice. And same goes for the music. So like when I push it up. I just want it a little lower than that. See, at that setting, I can go as loud as I want to go. And if I accidentally become too loud, it's not going to clip. And if I'm going into a transition where two songs are overlapping, the signal doesn't get too strong where it starts clipping. It's just simple tools that you can use in OBS. If you got any questions, comments, or anything to add about using a compressor and a limiter while using OBS, please leave them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear your thoughts, answer any questions, or learn anything new that you guys might have to add that I haven't covered here. If you like this video, please smash that like button. And if it's your first time here and you found this video useful, please click that subscribe button and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care, stay healthy.